Hey guys, welcome to the channel. My name is Alex and today we're going to take a closer look at one of the watches from my personal collection. It's a purchase I made quite recently and it was not a planned purchase. So to say I accidentally stepped across this quirky watch on a Swedish forum and I just uh, knew I had to, to buy it. I was quite surprised, I must say, when I posted this watch on my Instagram page because it received a lot of positive feedback and people actually thinking this is a very beautiful and interesting watch. And I, I mean, uh, I'm biased, of course, but in, in all senses, I didn't really think it was like, wow, this is the most beautiful watch I've ever seen because it's quite quirky um, and I know the kind of design language from the late 80s, mid 90s, the neo vintage pieces are not always in such big demand. But yeah, you guys seem to enjoy it. So hence this video where I will tell you more about the history of the watch and the history of the GG Le Cult Odysseus collection, because it's quite an important collection in the history of GG Le Cult. Before we start to talk about the history of the collection and the watch itself, I would like to say thank you to Mathieu and Laurent at JJ Le Cult for helping me out. You've been very helpful with providing catalogs, information about the watch, press releases from the late 80s and really helping me to collect all the necessary information about the watch itself and the Odysseus collection. So thank you very much guys. I appreciate it. So the brand JJ Le Cult Probably don't need no further introduction. Um, it's a brand that's also referred as the watchmaker's watchmaker. Rich history, many inventions, many beautiful calibers throughout the years. I mean, they have been the base caliber for very popular models uh, such as the Nautilus and the Royal Oak, just to name the two of them. They have been in plenty of different high-end watches. Um, so I won't talk so much about the history of the brand, but more so of the history of this important watch because it was truly something else at the time of the introduction. Nowadays, a watch with a mecha quartz movement is nothing you raise your eyebrows about. But in the late 1980s, the mecha quartz movement developed by Gégé Le Cult was something else. And you have to consider that at this time of introduction, GG Le Cult were struggling a lot due to the quartz crisis. So at this time of the introduction, this was something very important, something they put down a lot of resources in producing and developing. Nowadays, you can just like shrug your shoulders and say, but it's a mecha quartz movement. But this specific movement is truly something else. But before we start to talk about the movement itself, let's have a brief overview of the Odysseus collection. It was a collection that they launched in the late 80s and it consisted of several different models. The typical trademark for all of them was yellow gold cases with pink gold accents. So basically two tone cases throughout the different models, except the one I'm reviewing, which was the first tantalum timepiece ever created by GG Le Cool. So the Odysseus collection consisted of several different models. We had a perpetual calendar, a triple calendar with moon faces, an automatic ultra thin version with date, a manual winding version ultra thin without a date, a manual winding version with small seconds, and also of course the chronograph with or without the moon face indicator. And this specific watch, the Tantalum and Rose Gold chronograph, it was actually the first time ever that GG Le Cult used tantalum for a watch. And tantalum is quite a special material. It's a dark blue gray metal that is heavy and it's almost as heavy as gold, but has some other characteristics. So on the wrist, it really gives you a lot of wrist presence. And this tantalum material has also been used by brands like AP and the tantalum and rose gold combination has been used for the Royal Oak in different versions. And as this was the first piece and it was introduced back in 1989, the second time Gégé Le Cult used Tantalum for another watch was back in 2014 for their Hybris Artistica Master Grande Tradition Euro Turbillon 3 and that was a unique piece. So you see that this 
material is quite exotic and for a long period of time there wasn't really many brands that used this material but um, a couple of years ago Omega also introduced a Seamaster in Tantalum so it's a material I like it's exotic so I wish that more brands use this material. So the Gégé Le Cult Odysseus chronograph is the fusion between a quartz watch and a mechanical chronograph. So it's basically the best of two worlds. So me personally, I like quartz watches. I find them very convenient to use. You know, whenever I have a couple of quartz watches in rotation, uh, I can just pick it out from the safe and it still keeps the correct time and date, which is nice. But also the reliability of a quartz watch with the accuracy is something that's also really nice. And in this case, you have combined the accuracy and the convenience with a quartz movement together with the highly complicated mechanical part of the movement uh, that is the chronograph. And this model was only in production for three short years and it is like many of the Gégé Le Coult timepieces produced in quite small quantities. So this is not something you really stumble upon across the market, the, the open market, the secondary market. I've seen a couple, I mean like a handful of tantalum chronographs and I've been scouting for old auctions uh, and such. So this one seems quite rare, which of course helped me in the decision of pulling the trigger. So let's talk a bit about the case of the watch. As I mentioned, it's made out of tantalum and rose gold. It's a 34.5 millimeter case in diameter. We have a thickness of 7.5 millimeters, so it's very slim. And we'll talk more about the slimness of the watch soon. It wears nice on my 16.5 centimeter wrist, I must say. It's a classic proportioned watch. I mean, it's nothing for you guys that want something big and bulky. This is very slim and elegant and it flies under the radar, although it has some quite interesting features. And as you can see here, we have a stepped bezel and you have the pink gold accents of each side at the left and right side of the case. You have the pushers and the crown made of rose golds as well. And you also have these very nice fluted lugs. So, I mean, it's, it's a watch that I believe is a hate it or love it type of design. I wasn't quite sure at the start to, to be fully honest when I bought this watch, but now when I've been wearing it for quite some time, I really enjoy the looks of it. And that's, it feels like a typical 80s, 90s design, but with some nice touches by GG Le Coup. And one of the most interesting parts of this watch is the dial. This dial is a meteorite effect dial. It's not actually meteorite stone, which I first thought. So I asked Gégé Le Coult and they explained to me that this is a painted dial that they have painted in different layers to achieve a meteorite effect. So this was a bit of a letdown, I have to say, because I like these exotic stone dials. And I mean, at the end of the day, it doesn't really bother me because the dial looks really good and it really changed appearance in different lighting conditions because it's very matte and dull in normal indoor conditions. But as soon as the watch comes outside, it really comes to life. And the combination between the tantalum case and the meteorite dial is just a beautiful combo. So there were two versions of the meteorite dial. You had either with silver subdials as the one I'm wearing today. And there's also a version with blue subdials. We have applied markers in rose gold. We have three subdials for the chronograph and the small seconds. So at the right side, you have the 12 hour chronograph counter. At six o'clock, you have the small seconds. And at nine o'clock, you have the 30 minute chronograph counter. 12 o'clock, we have this moon face, a very romantic complication, I must say. Four o'clock date window that I could have lived without, but I mean, yeah, it is what it is. I like date complications. This is not something that disturbs me too much. And we also have a pulsation scale at the outer part of the dial. And this is um, also known as the doctor's complication. I like pulsation scales, it's easy to take the pulse. 
when you've been out running or something like that, which I rarely do. <laughs> but uh, instead of a tachymeter scale, I find the pulsation scale more of use personally. So the entire Odysseus collection was delivered on either ostrich leather straps or a yellow gold bracelet. Mine didn't have the original strap nor the original buckle. I don't dare to ask how much an original buckle in Tantalum would cost me. I guess it's quite expensive. So I've just put this one on a top Safiano leather strap and I think the combination works quite well. So if we leave the case and dial and start to talk about what's the real star of the show here, so to say, and it's the movement, the GG Le Cult Mecha Quartz Caliber 630. This movement consists of 233 components. Yes, you heard me right. That's sometimes more even than a fully mechanical watch. So it is very complicated. And this movement is only 3.7 millimeters thick. So it's very slim. And also at the time of the introduction, this was the smallest mechanical chronograph movement ever developed. At the time of introduction, this movement only took up a third of the volume as a traditional mechanical chronograph movement. And it was 40% smaller than the smallest quartz chronograph movement at the time. So that's quite an achievement, I must say. And what's interesting as well is that you can use this movement as a second time zone. So if you start the chronograph at exactly 12 o'clock when you're departing from your home time zone, you can actually use the three o'clock subdial to keep track of your home time whenever you're traveling through different time zones. It's a very complicated movement. And I wouldn't, you know, just um, reject this movement as a mechanical quartz movement as any else you can find in micro brands nowadays, for example. This is something that's very high end. And I mean, the finishing of it, it's done with the high standards of GG Le Cult finishing as well. So this is something they really put down a lot of time and effort in developing and finishing in the late 80s. So it was quite a revolutionary movement at the time. So yeah, I mean, that's the GG Le Cult Odysseus chronograph in Tantalum explained quite briefly. It's a very interesting watch, in my opinion, with a rich history and with a design that really appeals me. I like this quirky stuff, this more of uh, rare birds, odd stuff that you don't really see every day. And if you like the watch and how it looks, but you don't necessarily like the chronograph, I, I think you definitely should explore the Odysseus collection as a whole, because I think they offer some great value for the money. I know that you can find the perpetual calendar under 10,000 euro, for example, in gold. And I mean, it's a mechanical perpetual calendar, super nicely finished with a enamel dial, I believe, or if it's lacquered. So they have a lot to offer within the Odysseus collection. And I believe that these neo vintage pieces from brands like GG Le Cult are on the rise. We see the trend is moving that way. People are starting to look for great undervalued watches from the 80s and 90s with more traditional sized cases. I believe this is a perfect example of that. A watch that's been flying under the radar for many years, but is a very interesting piece in terms of both aesthetics and the mechanical part of the watch. So with that said, I hope you liked this video and I would love to hear your thoughts on this watch. Don't forget to like the video, subscribe to the channel, share this video. It would mean a lot to me if you help this channel grow. So stay tuned for the next video and I'll see you guys next week.